Fun fact, I was actually going to try and do monthly videos, but for whatever reason, I just forgot August, so my bad for that. I know you all very much so missed hearing me ramble, so you're getting it now. So it's been no secret that the MCU has been building up to a Thunderbolts project as of late. I mean, everyone knew it. Even CBR, and they're the worst. It was pretty obvious when they stopped killing off every single villain in every single project, so it came to no one's surprise when we got the official movie confirmation at SDCC, and just recently at D23, we got the official team lineup. And it sucks. It's really bad. Like, really bad. The Thunderbolts roster that they showed off consisted of Val, a boss who will presumably be working exclusively behind the scenes, Ghost, someone with pretty unique phasing abilities, Red Guardian, a master martial artist, Yelena, a master martial artist, Bucky Barnes, a master martial artist, US Agent, a master martial artist, and Taskmaster, a master martial artist. Do you perhaps see a theme with this team? They all do the same fucking thing. This team blows, all right? There's one person who can do something different from everyone else. Everyone else is just Captain America rough off and also like a super spy. This team sucks. That's not even including the pretty notable exemptions from the team like Zemo. Zemo's kind of a famous leader in the comics and uh, he's alive in the MCU. He's kicking, he's in the raft. I don't really see a reason why not to put him on there. I know some people have said, oh, well, he hates superpowered people in the MCU, so you shouldn't put him on a team full of superpowered people, but that's kind of exactly why you want to put him on a team full of superpowered people, no? Make him uncomfortable. Make him make everyone else uncomfortable. And that's not mentioning Abomination, who, spoilers for She Hulk, all right seemingly is fully reformed and out of prison. At least at the time I am making this video. The whole show isn't out yet. So maybe the events of She-Hulk prevent him from being in a Thunderbolt movie. Fair enough. But like, still, Zemo? Justin Hammer. Justin Hammer would be a great addition to the team. Why is he not on here? Seems like a weird exemption as well. I think it's safe to say that the MCU's lineup for the Thunderbolts is lackluster, to say the least. I've even seen some MCU diehard stands say something along the lines of, oh, I'm sure the movie will be great, but this is kind of a boring lineup. So if they're saying something even slightly critical, you know it's bad. Well, maybe the Thunderbolts just aren't that interesting, and maybe they've always been kind of a boring team in the comics. No. You're wrong, idiot. Why would you why would you say that? The Thunderbolts are awesome. Stupid. Idiot. Moron. Why would you say that? They're sick as fuck. Stupid. Well then who are the Thunderbolts, I hear you asking. Which to that I have to say, thank you for watching my video and not just reading a CBR article. So the Thunderbolts first made their appearance in the late 90s when due to comic shenanigans at the time, all of the heroes got sucked into a pocket dimension and were seemingly lost forever. So the Thunderbolts emerged as these brand new heroes. They even had their own tagline, justice like lightning. And if that is not on at least one poster, I'm going to be pissed. So the Thunderbolts showed up and kind of filled the void that all the heroes had left behind. But uh-oh, turns out at the end of the first issue, it's revealed that the Thunderbolts aren't real and they're just the masters of evil in disguise, pretending to be heroes as a big ploy. Which, at the time, the masters of evil comprised of Zemo, Screaming Mimi, Beetle, The Fixer, Goliath, and Moonstone. So, um, none of those characters are in the MCU, except for Zemo, but it's not important, right? The Thunderbolts roster is always changing with time and different runs, different writers. It's constantly shifting. 
Some of the most notable members over the course of the years would have to be Luke Cage, Crossbones, Punisher, Deadpool, Red Hulk, Elektra, and so many more. But you get the point. The team is almost always comprised of villains and anti-heroes doing good for either their own choice, as in they want to improve and better themselves, or they're being forced to by the government. I think this is another area where the MCU's roster falls flat, because none of these guys are villains. Maybe with the exception of Ghost, but even then, like, I just recently rewatched Ant-Man and the Wasp, thank you for your prayers, I know, and she's not a full good guy by the end of it, but she's certainly not an evil murderous dickhead like she is for most of it. So. I don't, yeah. Bucky, Yelena, and Red Guardian, flat out, not villains. US Agent had a great corruption arc, but then halfway through the final episode, for whatever fucking reason, he gets a redemption arc out of no, <sighs> whatever, it's not important. And Taskmaster was freed from her brainwashing, so it's kind of implied that she wouldn't be a villain anymore, so. This team is not comprised of villains, it's just side characters. The thing that separates the Thunderbolts from every other team in Marvel is that they're a group of bad guys who, through their missions, learn to grow as a team and learn to grow into proper heroes. And if that sounds very similar to the Suicide Squad, you are right. <laughs> they are pretty similar. I don't think removing the whole redemption path for all these villains in order for them to grow into better heroic figures is worth it just so we hear people call the Thunderbolts Marvel Suicide Squad a little bit less. That's already been happening, and besides, what makes these teams different and distinctive is that, well, the team, the team members. The roster, the lineup, the dynamics between all of the characters. That's what makes each team special and distinctive from one another. Imagine if DC was like, oh, we're actually not going to make a Justice League movie because Marvel beat us to the punch with the Avengers films. Though given the current state of DC, I wouldn't put it past them. The dynamic between the characters is so important, both with internal conflicts and external conflicts. So, power diversity. This team sucks. Awful. Look at the original team. They all do something totally different from one another. And that's cool. Now, internal conflicts? I can see like a couple of these guys not liking each other, but... I don't know. They, they'd probably get along fine enough. Good enough for the mission, at least, which is not what I want. I don't think anyone wants that. Imagine just adding Zemo into it. And yes, I am a huge Zemo fan, both in the comics and in the MCU, but just hear me out. His utter hatred for superpowers would make everyone else feel really uncomfortable. That'd, that'd be perfect. Imagine if the team fails a mission because they can't get along. That is exactly what we need. And. That's a very natural reason for these characters not to get along. We know Zemo's not going to like these people, right? We already know that he doesn't like at least one of them. So put him on a team with people that he's not going to like. Put characters that aren't going to like each other. So far, the only characters that I can think of not getting along well are Bucky and John Walker, but I don't know, they, they seemed fine enough in Falcon and the Winter Soldier at the final episode, so whatever. Also, hell, why not? Throw in some new characters in this movie. This would be a great first appearance for Mockingbird, Fixer, Goliath, Moonstone. Obviously, sorry Beetle, obviously you probably can't introduce all of them here, but I don't know, just like Songbird and Goliath. Pick them out, throw them on the team. And just say that they were like already on the raft or whatever. They got beat by someone, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. They lost a fight in between movies, and they got thrown into prison, and now they're here, right? We don't really need to see how everyone ended up in prison and then gets out for the Thunderbolts, right? We don't, we don't need to see that. It's not that important. Look, the Thunderbolts are so 
cool. I love him so much. The idea that these group of villains are forced together for a mission and eventually learn that, hey, maybe I like being a good guy a lot more than being a bad guy is so cool. And honestly, a Thunderbolts movie has a lot of potential to be a lot of fun, but easily the most important thing for a Thunderbolts movie is to have a good core lineup. And this is just not a good lineup at all. This is just very disappointing. Fingers crossed. Look, I don't ever want to hate a movie, so I do hope I still like it, but I don't know. I am doubtful, but who knows? I don't know. Maybe. I'm praying. <laughs> so yeah, I hope I was able to give you at least a little bit more of an understanding as to who the Thunderbolts are. And if I made you a little bit more worried about the movie, then my bad. <laughs> Oops. Hey bro, turn around. It's good.